Hi, I'm Susanna, a Laravel developer and the founder of Laravels. And today I want to talk to you about writing resilient code. But I only have five minutes, so this is going to be a quick overview and I'm going to be speaking really, really fast to get through everything. Now, this talk started with me thinking about human resilience as opposed to confidence. Unlike confidence, which is believing in your own abilities, resilience is the ability to bounce back after setback. And it made me wonder if I could apply this to code and what would make code resilient. And this is the definition that I and people on the internet came up with. Resilient code is code that is designed to withstand, recover from, and adapt to unexpected circumstances without crashing or behaving unpredictably. In other words, code that continues to function well under stress. Now, this could mean different things depending on your context. It could mean sudden influx of users if your app goes viral, or you might run an amazing sale bringing your website to a halt. It could mean a third-party API going down and affecting your core functionality, but it could also mean users having non-reliable internet connection, leaving them with blank pages and spinners spinning everywhere. Now, regardless of the circumstances, we want our websites and web apps to be able to handle anything we throw at them. So let's see what could make our code more resilient. As they say, never trust a user, device or network connection. Validate your inputs, sanitize them, don't assume that people will know what to input because it's common sense. Because you know what it is about common sense. It's the least common of all senses, so I wouldn't rely on that. And don't think that people won't try to break your website or break in. Be clear about what kind of input your fields are expecting and catch validation errors early on. Now, speaking about catching validation errors, your code needs to be able to handle errors well. You can't let your application simply crash or display an error message to the end user. Rather than allowing all your exceptions to bubble up and crush the application, write code that anticipates potential failures and deals with them proactively. Make sure that users don't see ugly error pages and that developers, your future selves, get meaningful insights into what went wrong. And how do we know what went wrong? By monitoring our application and logging the important stuff. Monitor things like performance metrics, service availability, or even business metrics, for example, number of orders or logging failures. And as you monitor your app's activity, log the important things. But again, make sure that your logs are structured and meaningful and designed to help you debug. Don't log things like, hello, or I'm here, or test. This might be okay during the development stage, but it will not help you in production. And finally, have alerts in place to notify you when things are silently failing before your users do. But regardless how hard we try, errors will happen, they just will. But resilient code must be quick at error recovery, especially with temporary errors, for example, failed database connection, a third service hiccup, or again, bad internet connection. Your code needs to be able to retry connections and auto save form submissions so that data are not lost if internet suddenly drops. Fall back to cached pages or static content, but don't crush or lose data just because something went wrong. This is a really bad user experience and your code needs to be able to handle that. We all use third-party packages, APIs, payment gateways, file storage, the list goes on. They're all great, but they do go down every now and then. And if a third-party package connection fails, resilient code needs to handle this by showing a cached content and retrying the connection. And if the connection continues to be down, let the user know that the information on the service is not currently available or that it might be slightly out of date if you are showing the cached content. And if something breaks, don't break everything. Make sure your website continues to function as much as possible even with reduced functionality. Users should not be locked out of your website or your app just because something non-essential breaks. And I'm not just talking about third-party APIs. For example, JavaScript. Some users might have disabled JavaScript for whatever reason, or be on a slow connection again, which won't load CSS files or images. Now, if a JavaScript is required for a feature and it doesn't load, make sure it displays some message to the user, not just an error message or worse, even worse, nothing at all. And if it's CSS that won't load or images, make sure that your HTML is structured well so that the user can still make sense of what they are seeing on the screen, even without those styles and those images. And finally, don't skip testing. It's critical. But don't just test happy path. Test the edge cases too. Think like the user, not as the developer that knows how things should work. Test for bad inputs, unexpected states, service failures. We all know that users will not use our apps the way we expect them to or we want them to. They will find their own way to use it. 
So try to test your application from the user's perspective, not from the developer's perspective. And this is all I have time for today. I hope it was enough to show you a few things to pay attention to if you want to make your code function in all circumstances and make it more resilient. Now, if you want to see actual examples of the techniques I mentioned today, I will be giving this talk in full later on this year during Laracle in Australia and Brisbane. So I hope to see many of you there in person this time. Thank you.